Today on Spiritual Awakening Radio, Guru Nanak's morning prayer, known as the Japji, and other passages from the Sikh scriptures of India. Why was this vast expanse of the multiverse created? This is a garden for souls enjoying and learning from their experience of separation from the One for a time and then returning back to the One, the timeless Supreme Being, reuniting with God, is our reason to be here. As it says in the Sri Guru Granth Sahib, the Adi Granth, also known as the Sikh Scriptures of India, a huge collection of Psalms. It was for the sake of the God-conscious beings that our true Lord created this earth and began this play of death and birth. The tenth Sikh guru, Guru Gobind Singh, said, Just as millions of sparks fly from fire, they arise separately but again unite in fire. From God's form, incorporeal and corporeal beings are manifested and spring from Him. And they all shall be united in Him again. A verse from the Sikh scriptures put to music by Singh Kar in a song called Hukam from the album Peace Lagoon. Some lyrics from Hukam. One who considers himself to be a disciple of the true guru should rise before the coming of the light and meditate upon the name References to the term Gnostic in the Sikh scriptures. Gnostic is a Western term for a kind of mystic or knowing one, one who knows the divine, the opposite of an agnostic. It's a term that appears in the Gnostic Gospels and other Western mystical texts. But the word Gnostic also turns up in Sufi poetry as well as many times in various translations of the Sikh scriptures of India. For instance, this verse from Guru Amar Das of the Adi Granth, quoted in the Sikh scriptures, or Adi Granth. The egocentrics are deaf and will not see. Within them is only the fire of desires. They understand not the Master's word with full concentration, and do not illumine their mind with the name. They know not their inner self and have no faith in the Master's teaching. Within the mind of the God-conscious beings is enshrined the Guru's word and always bloom in their Lord's love. God saves the honor of the Gnostics, the knowing ones, those who experience God within. text of the Japji, morning prayer of Guru Nanak, constitutes the Mool Mantra, or basic principles as taught by Guru Nanak. God is described as the One Supreme Being, or Nirankar, the unmanifest manifested Ekankar, the conscious spirit pervading all forms that emanate from Him. He is not apart from his creation, but is in every form. There is one reality, the unmanifest manifested, ever-existent. He is Nam, 
or conscious spirit, the creator pervading all. Without fear, without anger, the timeless, the unborn, and the self-existent, complete within himself. Through the favor of his true servant, the Guru, he may be realized. He was when there was nothing. He was before all ages began. He exists even now, O Nanak, and shall exist evermore. That's the Kirpal Singh translation of the opening verses or Mool Mantra of Guru Nanak's Japji. And this is from Peace Lagoon, the translation of the Sikh scriptures, those same verses. Ekwan Kar Satnam, the creator of all is one. Truth is his name. He is the doer of everything. He is fearless without anger. He is undying, unborn, and self-illumined. This is revealed by the Satguru's grace. Meditate. He was true in the beginning. He was true through all the ages. He is true even now, O Nanak. Shall he ever be true? More from the Japji, returning to the Kirpal Singh translation. By his will is matter quickened into life. By his will is greatness obtained. By his will some are born high and others low. By his will are men's joys and sorrows ordained. By his will the pious obtain salvation. By his will the impious wander in endless transmigration. All exist under his will and nothing stands outside. One attuned with his will, O Nanak, is wholly freed from ego. True is the Lord, true is his holy word. His love has been described as infinite. Men pray to him for gifts which he grants untiringly. When all is his, what can we offer at his feet? What can we say to win his love? At the ambrosial hour of the early dawn, be you in communion with the divine word and meditate on his glory. Our birth is the fruit of our actions, but salvation comes only from his grace. O Nanak, know the true one in all. By communion with the word, one can attain the status of a Siddha, a peer, a Muslim holy man, a Sura, or a Nath yogi. By communion with the word, one can understand the mysteries of the earth and the heavens. By communion with the word, the earthly regions, the heavenly plateau, and the nether worlds stand revealed. By communion with the word, we can escape unscathed through the portals of death. O Nanak, his devotees live in perpetual ecstasy, for the word washes away all sin and sorrow.
commentary from Kripal Singh. Communion with the Holy Nam, the Divine Word, together with meditation on His glory, is the open sesame to the realization of the One Being. Word is the substance and the power by which all life is made. Holy Communion with its rapturous strains is a gift that can be attained only through a living Master. In His company, a life of holy inspiration and love of God is followed and the inner eye is opened to see the presence of God in all things. Nanak has hinted of this in the prologue itself and now proceeds to describe the greatness and importance of such a soul. The Satguru, the true master, is not a mere human being, but has become one with God, and as such contains in himself the powers of all the gods and goddesses. He is the word made flesh and blood. The one lesson that such a master teaches his disciples is to meditate always upon the Lord, the creator of everything, and never to forget him. This is from Guru Nanak, composed in the year 1499, found in the Adi Granth, sometimes referred to as the Guru Granth or Sri Guru Granth Sahib, the Sikh scriptures of India. There are planets, solar systems, and galaxies. If one speaks of them, there is no limit and no end. The Guru Granth Sahib states that there are planets, solar systems, and galaxies. If one speaks of them, there is no limit, no end. There are worlds upon worlds of his creation. As he commands, so they exist. He watches over all, and contemplating the creation, he rejoices. The scriptures say that the universe consists of many different bodies, including planets, solar systems, galaxies, stars, suns, skies, etc. And that the scale and extent of these bodies is unknown, and that there is no end to their number. It is clear from this that the probable size of the universe is beyond an exact evaluation or possible calculation by the human mind. According to Guru Nanak, there was darkness and chaos for millions of years. There was only God and nothing else. No mists, no clouds, no vapors, nothing. None exi existed except for God. Guru Nanak says, there was darkness for countless years. There was neither earth nor sky. There was only his will. There was neither day nor night, neither sun nor moon. God was in deep meditation. There was nothing except himself in the beginning. Many millions are the skies and the solar systems, skies above skies, millions are the galaxies, millions are the worlds, countless the earths, countless those who dwell upon them. Countless are the earths, countless the spheres, and countless the devotees. Countless are the gospels, the sutras, the odes, the Upanishads, the Gathas, the Quatrains, the Abhangas, the Gitas, Granths, Vanis, and Vedas. As Guru Nanak says in his morning prayer, or Japji, endless are the harmonies played by the minstrels, 
the players prepare endless tunes and measures to sing to thee, O bountiful creator. Thy light is within the beings, and the beings are all within thy light. Countless are the countries, the earths, and spheres, millions assigned to him ever new names, O Nanak. From the Kripal Singh translation of the Japji, the morning prayer of Guru Nanak. Countless there are that remember thee, and countless those that love thee. Countless there are that worship thee, and countless those that seek thee in austerity and penance. Countless there are that recite from sacred books thy praises, and countless those that absorbed in yoga stand indifferent to the world. Countless those thy devotees who contemplate thy attributes and wisdom. Countless those that practice truth and charity. Countless are the heroes that boldly face the foeman's steel. And countless those who have vowed silence, meditating on thee with unceasing love. What power have I to conceive of thy wonderful nature? Too poor am I to make an offering of my life to thee. What pleaseth thee is good, thou art forevermore, O formless one. There are millions of nether regions and skies above skies. Man has wandered endlessly in his search. The Vedas also say the same. The Muslim books speak of 18,000 universes, but it is the same power that sustains them all. If it could be accounted for, an account of it would have been recorded. All attempts at description are in vain. O Nanak, admit his greatness. He alone knows himself. are the skies and solar systems, many millions are the moons, suns and stars, many millions are the sources of creation and continents, many millions are the jewel containing oceans, many times has the universal expanse occurred, the Lord has strung all the creation in his thread, his limit no one knows. Many millions go about in many existences. Many millions have been the incarnations. Many millions are the creatures of various descriptions. Many millions of beings the Lord has made of good many descriptions. Many millions are the celestial singers. Ever and ever the unique Lord remains the same. From the Lord they emanate, and into the Lord they merge again. Nanak says, With whomsoever the Lord is pleased, he emancipates. The Lord is near, yet far from all. Nanak says, The Lord is pervasive in creation, yet he himself remains beyond. from the Japji, Guru Nanak's morning prayer and a few other passages from the Sikh scriptures of India, plus a passage from the 10th Sikh Guru in the Dasam Granth, another collection of Sikh texts, on the spiritual journey, meaning of life, how we got here, the cycle of separation and then return back to God again. After the break, I want to delve into the five cons of 
the Jap G of Guru Nanak, the five realms, the five basic universes or planes of creation, what they mean for the journey of the soul back to God again, the ascension of the soul, the five cons of Guru Nanak's Jap G, the five realms of creation. My name is James B, and you're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. Stay tuned for more after these messages. Sikh scriptures of India, God is described in the beginning, or in that infinite, timeless past, as meditating in his own self, and seems to have had a maternal instinct to reproduce, eventually giving birth to an infinite number of souls from himself, herself, itself, and an infinite number, seemingly an infinite number of bubble universes making up the multiverse or cosmos. As Huzur Baba Sawan Singh once said, from Sach Khand, the true timeless spiritual realm, the whole creation looks like bubbles forming and disappearing in the spiritual ocean. It says in the Sikh scriptures, as the bubbles in the water well up and disappear again. So is the universe created, says Nanak. In Swamiji Maharaja's Radha Swami commentary on the Japji of Guru Nanak, called the elucidation of the Japji, we read, the Supreme Being has created everything from one drop out of which have emerged millions of fathomless oceans. As with other descriptions of creation, we have another version of in the beginning was the word, the logos, the song of creation, the Shabad Nam, the voice of God saying, let there be the divine sound of the Godhead reverberating in all creation. Surat Shab Yoga is described in the Sikh scriptures as the way back to the Supreme Being again, to focus on the divine sound of the Creator, tracing that sound back to the Source with a capital S, Source being another name for God. As Guru Nanak says, by communion with the word, one can attain the status of a Siddha, a Pir, a Sura, or a Nath. By communion with the word, one can understand the mysteries of the earth and the heavens. By communion with the word, the earthly regions, the heavenly plateau, and the nether regions stand revealed. By communion with the word, one can escape unscathed through the portals of death. O Nanak, his devotees live in perpetual ecstasy, for the word washes away all sin and sorrow. Sikh scriptures describe getting up early before the sunrise, before the coming of the light, to repeat God's name and to meditate upon the Nam, the Shabad Nam, the Word. This is saying yes to divine grace and merging into that divine grace, focusing our attention upon the divine sound that busts into worlds of time and space to liberate souls. 
The five khans, realms or universes described in Guru Nanak's morning prayer. The spiritual journey of ascension. The ascension of the soul back to God again. The top plane of creation is called Sachkhand, the true realm, the realm of eternal truth, the spiritual realm of God. Below that is Karamkhand, or the realm of grace. Below that is Saramkhand, the realm of spiritual efforts, humility, and ecstasy. Below that is Gyankhand, or the realm of gnosis, the realm of knowledge. And at the bottom of creation is the physical plane, the plane of karma, or action, called Dharamkhand. Dharamkhand, the realm of action, this khand, refers to the karmic life of beings on earth and their daily tryst with karma. Guru Nanak has called the earth a Dharamshal, a home of dharma. Guru Nanak, the earth is a place where day, night, and date have been created along with air, water, fire, and sky. There is so much variety of living beings on earth. As are their deeds and actions, so is their result, the law of karma. Thus is behind their life circumstances. It is also the karma done while living on earth that attracts the grace, which is the sign that the person is now open to dwell in the next khand. The Sikh or disciple receives the fruit of his thought and action and goes ahead through meditation and simran. Such is the Dharma in Dharam khand, the Dharma, the way, the way of simran and meditation. In other words, we are focusing on that divine positive power. Choosing to ascend. Choosing to go beyond. The first realm is Dharam, which the soul must fully realize before it can rise to the next higher spiritual plane above it. This is the stage where the embodied souls must work fully we must merge back with the Supreme Being again. We must choose to commune with the Divine Word. Lighten our karmic load and begin our journey of ascension back to God again, getting closer to God. Focusing some attention, devoting some of each and every day to God, focusing our attention upon the Supreme Being. This takes us to Gyan Khan, the realm of Gnosis, the realm of knowledge. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. After the break, we'll delve into the meaning of Gyan Khan, the realm of Gnosis and knowledge and the other realms. The other planes of consciousness. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. Stay tuned for more coming up. The Job G or Morning Prayer of Guru Nanak today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. Gyan Khand, the realm of knowledge or gnosis, spiritual experience, spiritual wisdom. The Gurbani or Sikh scriptures, though simple, has subtle meanings behind each and every word. The Gurbani opens up doors and more doors of knowledge and wisdom. Indeed, the teachings of all masters do that when we read 
their words. Countless are the Kabirs, countless the Tulsi Sahibs, countless the Swamijis, countless the Namdevs, countless the Anurag Sagars. And the most praise of all to the living masters. Without the living masters, without their influence, we wouldn't be here today. There would be no podcast, no radio show, and no one interested in hearing these words. We'd be someplace else, and others would be the ones listening and creating this kind of satsang experience. Without the masters, we're not here. We're not informed. We're not aware of this realm of the path of the masters. Without the living masters, none of us are here. The satsang would be empty. Empty chairs in a room somewhere. Guru Nanak says, So many winds, waters, and fires, so many Krishnas and Shivas, so many Brahmas, fashioning forms of great beauty, adorned and dressed in many colors, so many worlds and lands for working out karma, so very many lessons to be learned, so many Indras, so many moons and suns, so many worlds and lands, so many Buddhas, so many yogic masters, so many goddesses of various kinds and demigods and silent sages, so many oceans of jewels, so many ways of life, so many languages, so many dynasties of rulers, so many aware people, so many devotees, says O Nanak. His limit has no limit. In the realm of wisdom, the realm of spiritual wisdom reigns supreme. The sound current of the Nod vibrates amidst the sounds and sights of bliss. And now, Gyan Khan, the realm of knowledge. Countless its elements, air, water, and fire. Countless Krishnas and Shivas. Countless the Brahmas, fashioning various creations. Countless the fields of action. Countless the golden mountains. Countless the Buddhas, the Naths, and countless the gods and goddesses. Countless the sources of creation, countless the harmonies, countless those that listen unto them, and countless the devotees of the word, endless and unending, O Nanak, this realm. Nanak in this stanza describes the immense expansion of the soul's horizon when it enters Gyan Khan, the realm of knowledge or gnosis. Here the devotee sees the manifold nature with all created things. Here he begins to truly hear the rapturous strains of the melodious song resounding through the whole creation. Here he feels excessive joy at the conception of nature with her immutable laws, her infinity of forms and phenomena. So many creations, so many manifold blessings. So a greater degree of sound and bliss and awareness of an expanded horizon. And that takes us to the next realm or state of consciousness, Saram Khand, the realm of spiritual efforts, humility and ecstasy. Says Guru Nanak, in the realm of humility, the word becomes multiple forms. These are fashioned with incomparable distinctness here. The surat soul of awareness, intellect, and understanding of the mind are shaped here. The consciousness of the spiritual warriors of spiritual perfection are shaped here. Divine knowledge illumines all in the realm of knowledge, while divine symphonies play unending music. Joy and bliss reign supreme. Next, in the realm of ecstasy, where the word is enrapturing. Everything created here is marvelously strange and beyond description. Whoever tries to describe the same must repent his folly. 
Herein the mind, reason, and understanding are etherealized. The self comes to its own and develops the penetration of the gods and the sages. From the description of Gyankhand, or the realm of knowledge, Nanak proceeds to describe Saramkhand, or the seal of ecstasy. Here, everything is enchantingly beautiful and marvelously strange, and words are of no consequence. It is here that the soul becomes etherealized by the power of the word, and one gets an insight into the real nature of things. Saram Khand. So more bliss, more transformed by the sound, more insight into the depths of creation is the Saram Khand experience. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. After the break, we'll delve into Karam Khand, the realm of grace. Salvation is ultimately by grace on the path of the masters. Good deeds, karma, effort will only take you so far. It's really divine grace that busts into worlds of time and space and has the power to liberate souls from the karmic treadmill of the karma that otherwise would dominate our situation. We'll explore the realm known as Karamkhand, and finally Sachkhand, the timeless realm of the eternal truth, the oneness with God, known as Sachkhand. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. More coming up. or the realms of consciousness described in Guru Nanak's morning prayer today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. One can see a pattern emerging here, sharing about the cons, that the soul is getting ever closer to God with greater absorption in meditation, with a sweeter and ever sweeter sound current to contemplate in meditation greater depth of insight, greater closeness to the Supreme Being, more of a sense of being permeated by the positive power, by the sound current, by divine grace. The next plane we'll cover is called Karamkhand, the realm of grace. Says Guru Nanak, in the realm of Karam, The word is the effort. No one else dwells here except the great spiritual heroes. They are totally imbued with the oneness consciousness. They are sewn together with the Creator, filled with the awe of His glory. Their form cannot be described. They do not die. They do not reincarnate. And so neither are deceived by maya or illusion when within those minds the Lord abides. Here in Karamkhand, devotees of many worlds dwell. They are in anand or spiritual bliss, anand or ananda, and the true Lord abides within them. Higher still stands Karam Khan, I'm reading from the Kripal Singh translation of this section of the Jap G of Guru Nanak. Higher still stands Karam Khan, the realm of grace. Here the word is all in all, and nothing else prevails. 
Here dwell the bravest of the brave, the conquerors of the mind, filled with love divine. Here dwell devotees with devotion, all hearts filled with God, they live beyond the reach of death and of delusion. Here dwell the Bhagats, or sages, drawn from all regions, who rejoice in the True One and live in perpetual bliss. In the realm of grace man rises above the charms of the phenomenal world. He sees all nature standing submissively to serve at God's feet. His word purifies the soul of its sins and awakens the latent energies in it. Matter no longer binds the inner vision. For him the Lord prevails everywhere, and he is now fully conscious of him. Here one comes face to face with the word in its pure substance, and he now knows himself and his true origin, for he sees himself as the same substance as God. The commentary of Kripal Singh about the state of consciousness or the heavenly realm known as Karamkhand. And the ultimate goal, Sachkan, the timeless realm of the eternal truth, oneness with the Supreme Being. Says Guru Nanak, in the realm of truth, the formless Lord abides. Having created the creation, he watches over it. And his glance of grace bestows happiness to the devotee. There are planets, solar systems, and galaxies. If one speaks of them, there is no limit, there is no end. There are worlds upon worlds of his creation. And as he commands, so they operate. Sach Khand, or the realm of truth, is the seat of the formless one. Here he creates all creations, rejoicing in creating. Here are many regions, heavenly systems, and universes. To count which were to count the countless. Here, out of the formless, the heavenly plateau and all else come into form, all destined to move according to his will. He who is blessed with this vision rejoices in its contemplation. But, O Nanak, such is its beauty that to try to describe it is to attempt the impossible. Finally, the pilgrim soul is reaching Sach Khand, or the abode of truth. He experiences complete oneness. Here complete oneness is realized, and it sees all the universes functioning according to his will, in devout awe and adoration. Even remembrance of such a vision is blissful. But the vision itself is such that no eye has ever seen, the heart cannot conceive, and the tongue cannot describe. Kripal Singh's commentary on the Sach Khand section of Guru Nanak's Japji. What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no hand can touch, what no human mind can conceive of, that I will give you, say the Masters. And that's also, of course, a quote from the Gospel of Thomas, saying 17. Since I noticed Kripal Singh's reference reminded me of that saying. My name is James Bean. Spiritual Awakening is here every week. To get in touch with me, send me a text message at my Google phone number, 207-358-9381. Or send me an email at this address, james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. James at spiritualawakeningradio.com. 
Visit my website, spiritualawakeningradio.com. At my website is a PayPal donate button. There are links to blogs. There are links also to podcasts that are available 24-7 on demand for free. There are links to social media, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, WordPress, Blogger, and so on, where you can read daily spiritual quotes. Tune in again next week at the same time for another edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Mm-hmm.